Okay. I'm just going to do the typical. I will start in about 30 seconds. I know I'm doing this for a lot of you who work during the day and you're like, crap, she's doing the live broadcast while I'm at work. So I know you'll be catching the recording, but, um, Hey Julie. Um, I am going to go ahead and get started. I've got my screen up so I can hopefully see some of your questions and stuff like that. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Hey, Rebecca. All right. Let's get started. So I was told to keep this about five or six minutes. So I'm going to talk really super fast. <laughs> Just kidding. It's probably going to be about 10 minutes. So, but I do want to get started on time. And then those of you um, that missed the beginning can go back and catch it up. So Dara did an amazing job on Monday talking about the why and how of reconnecting with people on your Facebook. And I thought she did a fantastic job because um, I think a lot of us sometimes, you know, overcomplicate it really, you know, and I, I really love how she simplified it. And then Nikki, of course, did an amazing job yesterday about finding people and adding them to your network. And so if you are, hang on, I got to close this because that's distracting. Okay, so if you are posting on your page and you are, you know, sharing five different things about you and your brand and things like that, at some point, so, or you're posting about your challenge group, at some point someone's going to say to you, so what's this stuff with this challenge group? What's this Shakeology stuff, right? And then you're going to be like, oh my God, they asked me a question. And I know a lot of my new, my new coaches are like, okay, now what do I say? So I hope that this will help you. I did post these in the thread of the banner that I was going live today so you can get them later if you haven't already and follow along um, so it will help so that you don't have to write down so many notes okay so my first tip is when you respond to somebody I typically don't answer their question I immediately go in and chat about something that is non beach body so I'll see they message me, I'll jump over to their profile real quick and I'll kind of scan and see, you know, maybe their kid was at a birthday party or they went to the zoo or just they're having really bad weather. I will mention something about that's completely non beach body that connects us first so that it doesn't feel like I'm over eager and like ready to just spew beach body stuff down their throat because the last thing you want somebody to think is, oh God, why did I even ask? I'm so sorry I asked it, right? So it just feels more human when you initially respond with something personal. So I may say, hey girl, you know, gosh, I see this it's like snowing up there. Do you have any plans for spring break? Blah, 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 blah. And, um, and just kind of get a little more chatty on a personal level. So then they may say, okay, well, you know, I saw that you posted about Shakeology or this challenge group. Like, like what is all that? What does that mean? And um, so I want you to write this down because this is super important. I think what happens so often, we, we become Beachbody coaches and now all of a sudden we have like this hat on, like I'm a Beachbody coach. I must answer Beachbody questions and talk about Beachbody all day long. And if you weren't a coach and you loved the programs and loved everything about the, um, the business, you would like be really, really excited and be unapologetically sharing about it. And that's the mindset I always want you to keep when you're talking, talking with somebody, whether in person or on Facebook, when you're having conversations with them. Take the beach body hat off and chuck it out the window. Just speak as a human being speaking to another human being. So this is what I want you to write down. Your first objective is to build trust. First and foremost, you want to build trust with the person you're speaking with. Then you want to ask questions. I'm going to walk you through this process. Then you want to ask questions. Once you've asked questions, and I'm going to give you st very strategic questions to ask, then you're going to offer value. And some of that value may be free. So if any of you have ever done Shalane Johnson, she always, oh, hang on. She always talks about some reason my iTunes popped up. Um, hopefully it doesn't start playing. That was weird. Um, she always talks about offering free value and giving value and in pouring into somebody to help build that trust and show your worth and how that you can help them. So you're going to offer value. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to resolve any issues or problems they have with solutions. 
And those solutions, of course, are going to be from your Beachbody tool belt. So that is your kind of objective along the way. So build trust, ask questions, offer value, and then offer solutions. So I personally always prefer the chat feature on Facebook Messenger, where you're actually speaking with the person as opposed to typing. And I've got several reasons why, and I was chatting with some of the coaches on my team on why we feel that the chat feature is just so much better. So first of all, when you hear someone's voice, it's so much more personable than just reading a message back. Sometimes they feel like, oh my gosh, is she scripting me? Is this, you know, is this canned, whatever? So I think hearing someone's voice takes this from a transactional kind of relationship to a more personal building relationship. So that's one reason why I would always suggest using the voice response. It feels more sincere and authentic. So again, less transactional, they hear your voice, they're, they're gonna hear your emotions, they're gonna hear how excited you are, and they're gonna hear how, wow, I, they're gonna hear your empathy. Wow, I'm really you know, sorry to hear you've been struggling with this ever since you had your baby. So it just sounds way more authentic. The emotions are gonna come across in your voice. Now, I would say try and get on the phone with them, but here's the thing if you leave a voice, if you leave a voicemail, and I credit Patty Husk to this because it <laughs> you're already halfway there. It's already like a phone conversation where it's personal and they hear your voice, and now you've kind of closed the gap between writing. Now they hear your voice and they hear you speaking, so it's like a conversation so that when you do eventually get on the phone, it's less weird, right? It just is like the natural progression of what you do. So it shortens and diminishes the weirdness if you leave a voice message. Now, I would say this, when it comes to information, shorter is always better. You can always go back and say more. But if you vomit all over them, they're gonna be really, really, really sorry they asked you. So remember, always think, if you're thinking, oh, should I say this and should I add that, you're always better off going shorter and leaving more to the imagination than spewing all over them. So, hey, Jamie. Okay, so this is exactly what I do. Once I'm at this point, I will do a little bit of small talk. I will get their permission. And I feel like that creates respect, trust, and boundaries. And so I will say something like this. And it shows I'm willing to listen. Most people, when they reach out, they're like, oh gosh, they're probably gonna spew all over me. This is showing that you're willing to listen and that's how you roll. So I will say this. Hmm, let me see. Um, I really like to better understand what you're hoping to achieve. So would you mind if I asked you a couple questions so I can offer the best solutions for you? Because I really don't want to just tell you what may work, you know, overall because you may have specific needs and I want to make sure I'm meeting those needs for you. So would you mind if I asked you a couple questions? Just like that. And then of course they're going to say yes, okay, whatever. So I have 14 questions here. Dear God, don't ask them all 14 questions. You're going to feel like they're going to feel like you're interrogating them. Practice different ones and see which ones feel right to you. See which ones kind of you're comfortable talking about. But these questions are really going to help build trust, offer value and offer solutions and make it seem so much less salesy and more value added. Okay, so um, number one, what are you hoping to accomplish? Is it more to improve your health or is it about weight loss? And the reason why I ask that, because it make, so many people are used to getting the weight loss message that when you say, is it to improve your health, they're like, hmm. So now you're giving them two opportunities to have value, right? And we know that we can also improve our health. So it makes them start thinking, this isn't just about weight loss, this is about health, because they'll come back and probably say, well, gosh, both. Okay, number two, what have you tried in the past what did you like about it? What did you dislike about it? And share with me why it's not working now. That's a really valid question because if you think about it, if it were working and they liked it, they wouldn't be talking to you. But they're here and they're reaching out to you wanting more information. So they may say, you know, I tried low carb Atkins in the past, but I found it just wasn't a realistic lifestyle or um, it doesn't work anymore. You know, the certain exercise doesn't work anymore because I don't have time to go to the gym since I've had my baby, right? So now that you know that, you already know, okay, I can talk about portion fix 
And I can also plug in the fact that our workouts, they can do at home while her baby is sleeping in the morning or on nap time. So now I'm gonna offer convenience. What has worked for you in the past? What do you like and dislike and why isn't it working for you now? That answer will give you so many options and solutions. I'm gonna fly through these. Number three, um, let's see. And number three is kind of like number four, but it, it shows you and gives you an opportunity to see how their lifestyle has changed. Number four, share with me a little bit about your support system. Because I guarantee you guys have had challengers that their husbands try and sabotage their results, the ladies in their circles at work, all of a sudden like disown them every time they try and lose weight and don't invite them to Olive Garden for lunch, whatever their support system. Share with me a little bit about your support system because you know where this is going, right to the challenge group. And so they share with you whatever that is and then you say, gosh, you know, empathize. What you're sharing with me isn't, isn't that uncommon. You know, 80% of people fail anything that they try and do, not because the tools don't work, but because they lack support. And that is really where we can, I can help you because I offer an accountability group that's going to be support all the time for you in the group and give you X, Y, and Z and so on and so forth. So that segues you to now offer value and share that we have challenge groups and offer support. Number five, what are your food addictions? What kind of cravings do you have? That answer, well, gosh, I crave this and I do that and blah, blah, blah. That answer is really good segue for you to share with them. You know what? You're not alone in this. There's this like really, there's like this diet cycle thing, right? Where we, we cut all these, these, cut all these nutrients out. We, we cut our, our calories down and then we, you know, we're doing okay. We lose weight. And then we realize by like day eight or nine, like we're, you know, you're, we have more cravings. We're grouchy. We're tired. We feel miserable and we're not really enjoying ourselves because we feel crappy. We don't have energy to work out. Have you ever felt like that? And then say, well, it, what's ironic is that when you cut all these calories out of your diet, you're also cutting your volume and nutrients. So what's awesome about our program and our shake and our nutrient system is you're going to get the most amount of nutrients for the least amount of calories. And what that means for you is you're actually going to do a program where you feel better, you have energy, you sleep better, your cravings go away, and you feel satisfied. Aren't those the reasons why you typically don't do well in the past? Because if you actually feel good, you're going to stick to something and then you're going to have support. So that is a really good question to kind of share with them the diet cycle. Let them know that they're not alone. It's really common and this is how we're different. So there's that one. Number six, what's your water intake like? Mine's been actually really bad today. Um, what's your water intake like? And this is something where if you had a free water group or like a little bit of value you could offer on water recipes, you can give them free value without expecting anything in return. And maybe share with them a couple tips on why it's so important they drink water throughout the day. Or you can say, hey, let's do a challenge tomorrow. Let's you and I drink water. and We'll like have a little competition between us to see how much we're getting in. Building rapport building like a sense of connection and building trust and offering value for nothing. Number seven, share with me what a typical day looks like for you. So this is where people are gonna tell you they skip breakfast, they go out to eat for lunch, they throw, they go through a drive through for dinner. <laughs> this is where they're gonna tell you where like everything ends up happening and it's gonna be a huge pocket of problems. But every time they give you all these problems, you're gonna be able to now, every problem they give you, you're gonna have a solution and give them hope on why our products are gonna be the answer to their prayers. So that's a really good one to find out what their typical day looks like. The next one, where are you going to fit your workout in? So you know you need to work out, but you just told me a typical day, you get up at five o'clock, in the morning, you go to bed at 10, so I know you you know you need to work out. Let's talk about where this workout is gonna fit in. Because here's one thing, we know that they can want to do it all day long, but if we don't help them fit it in, it's not gonna happen. And you can also leverage on demand. They could, maybe it's gonna be better for them to do it on their lunch break. Maybe it's gonna be better for them to do it, you know, somewhere where they need to be able to stream the workout as and when they're ready. And so that's a really good way to offer support um, when it comes to where they're gonna get this workout and fit it in. Number nine, tell me what challenges you foresee 
yourself facing. This is where they're gonna dump all their excuses on you. And excuses are opportunities. Problems are opportunities. All of these are really good opportunities for you to add solutions and values to whatever it is they foresee them facing. Um, number 10, what injuries do you have? This is another one where you can kind of leverage on demand and say, you know, I know you're pregnant now, but there's awesome maternity workouts and then you can slowly work, do some of the workouts after you have your baby and then build and progress up into whatever workouts you advance to as you get stronger and cleared for working out and your whole family can do them. Or if they have a bad knee and they're rehabbing it. So you can paint the picture of progression through the on-demand and how much value that's going to add to them. So that's another good one. Um, how are you with planning meals? And they may say, oh crap at it. Well, I have a free meal prep group. Let me get you in my free meal prep group. You can talk about the containers. Really good way to offer value and solutions. Um, share with me a little bit about your calorie range and where do you know where you're supposed to be with your calories? Oh God, no, I hate counting calories. Such a pain. I always screw it up. Well, we have something called the portion fix where you don't actually count calories. Would you like to hear more about it? Boom, there's that one. Okay, share with me a little bit on how much sleep you get. And this is like kind of a good way to segue into the amount of energy they're gonna have and feel by doing our products. And the last one, do you consume caffeine? Do you take vitamins? Do you take medicine? Um, because these are really good ways where you can say and share where Shakeology will, especially for the vitamins, be a better alternative. So not only are you gonna get all the vitamins you're already taking, you don't need to take those synthetic ones, you're also gonna get all your pre and probiotics, your digestive enzymes, all this other really amazing stuff that's like five plates of salad, and you're gonna have more energy and feel better, and you may even be able to reduce some of your medications as you progress. What do you think about that? So those are my 14 questions. All of them are super power packed to give you guys so much ammo and build trust in the process, add value to our products, build a relationship, offer them free value, free groups, things like that. So print that up. Even if you have to role play with your sponsor or your success partner or pick a few people in your group, role play. I know it sounds weird, but it's easier to do it <laughs> and get kind of get the words out. Um, the other thing I wanted to touch on, and I'm not going to get into this right now, but I did this call about a month or so ago, and it's 11 ways to create awesome conversations and connections. And I put this in the comment section of the banner that I was going on at three o'clock today. And I put the video that goes with this. It's a 20 minute video, but this will help you. If you notice, I said words like share with me, or are you open to there are words you can use that create trust and build connections. And then there's words you'll use that makes it feel salesy and transactional. And so I give you of 11, 11 words to use that help create value and trust and the ones not to. And then at the end of the call, I talk about how to close, how to turn everything into the positive and how to ask open-ended questions. So those go really well with this segment because as you're asking these questions and having a conversation, you'll be able to use these words and these terms so that you can build amazing connections with people. And it feels natural and it feels conversational and it feels like you're helping them and it doesn't feel at all like the icky sticky other people that are writing away and word vomiting all over them and not asking them any questions about what their needs are. So we are here to add value, build relationships, and be better than any other freaking team in Beachbody. So that is all I have for today. Thank you all for being on the call. Happy Wednesday. And if you have any questions or comments, post them below. I always love reading them. All right, guys. Um, oh, and I will post the call that went to this in the comments below if you want to watch it because they definitely go really well together. All right, guys, have a great day.